Hey, what is up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here a quick guide on the Shadow Dagger Trapper Falconeer in Last Epoch. The build is kinda a hybrid but with the focus of the falconry. Uh, we get tons of speed and mobility, huge damage and best of all no uniques is required for this build to work, making it a perfect starter build. I used a very similar setup while doing the campaign and for the whole leveling park basically for my falconeer and it's just been a blast destroying everything and zooming throughout the end game. By stacking tons of throw damage we can make so the falcon we get half from all this damage from the Averil Hurl passive from the falconer passive tree. And at the same time also boosting the damage of other throw skills like the shadow dagger for example. The Shadow Dagger is a trigger skill that we get from using our other abilities and how it works is upon reaching 4 stacks of Shadow Daggers the Dagger will plunge into the target dealing physical damage and this will always crit. And one way to trigger this is from the ability Umbral Blades. And from Lethal Darkness we get so Umbral Blades hit will inflict a stack of Shadow Daggers on while using a dagger. The rest of these notes are basically just to increase the uh, area of the Umbral Blades. But then we also have Lothing here which makes it so the Blade Storms will now seek out enemies. And we're also using Explosive Blade which will make the blade explode uh, once reaching an enemy. And Burst of Agony will just increase this uh, explosion even more. We're also using Sub-Zero Intrusion. And this will change the physical tag of the skill to Cold. And we don't really care about the damage of the Umbral Blades itself. As they are so minimal to the build. That we could just go for this route to get some extra freeze rate. And also Cold Snap Strike will increase this freeze rate. And will also give us a chance to shield. By using Aerial Assault, which is also our mobility skill, makes it trigger the Umbral Blades for us so we don't have to cast them ourselves from the Twilight Strike passive. Also Plumge Dagger for an extra Shadow Damager from the Umbral Blades. And the Aerial Assault is also used as a damage ability itself. Ambush here makes the wings deals more damage to high health enemies. And also using Slayer of Big Prey will make it so the extra damage will also apply against bosses and rares regardless of their health. We're expecting to Skyward Swoop, make a potion of aerial assault colon is recovered when your falcon hits an enemy. We have Refreshing Resolve which will recover a portion of our missing mana when we use the scale. And also coordinated assault directly using aerial assault recovers a portion of the remaining colon of Falcon and die bomb per 10 maximum mana you have. And Falcon is the main damage ability for this build setup. And this will enable the Falcon for us and also give us the combo skill Falcon Strikes. We're going for marking strikes, makes our Falcon's other hits now have a chance to inflict Falcon's mark. And by using Avian Arsenal, make it so when we consume a Falcon's Mark, your Falcon will gain a additional melee damage equal to a portion of your added melee damage, throw damage, or bow or spell damage, depending on the type of ability used to consume the Mark. And in this case, it's going to be the throw damage for us. Hunter Spores, make so the Falcon kill a enemy or hit a boss or rare enemy, it will restore health and mana to you based on our total attributes. Falcon's Journey makes it so the Falcon deal more global damage per character level and also per point of dexterity. Is it the bird? For some extra damage multiplier to the Falcon here and this will also be tripled for the Falcon Strike skill. Tate to Hunt makes so the highest of the global increase melee damage, increase throw damage or bow damage now also applies to all of our Falcon's damage. We also have Go for the Ice, which is basically the same, but for crit instead. Exposed Weakness makes so a portion of our global uh, critical strike multiplier will now apply to the Falcon as well. And here we get a buff that will consist for 10 seconds, which can stack 2 times. And we will get uh, 25 per stack here from our multiplier to the Falcon. 
Rendering Talents makes so a portion of our ailment chance from different sources uh, will now apply to the fat on hits by 200% of its value. And here the most important one is going to be the Shred Armor. And do keep in mind that you will have to have some Shred Armor chance on your gear for this actually to be worth it. So getting some Shred Armor chance on your amulet for example uh, is a must for this to work. We also spec into Puncher, which is going to be another source of obtaining Shadow Daggers. And it's going to be from the Death Imprints here, uh, gives us an additional Shadow Dagger chance here per hit. Also from Shatter, we also get some extra Armor Shred chance and also Armor Shred effect from this as well. Splinter makes so we also shred Fiscal Resist here, which is really helpful as the Falcon deals Fiscal damage. And also from Press the Attack, we get some Frenzy here for a short duration. And the increased attack speed here do actually increase the throw attack speed as well. Puncture, however, is nothing that we use ourselves, which is going to be triggered from using the net ability. We spec down here, both throw makes so we no longer flip when we use net. Net traps make so we now throw net as a trap instead. And Spear Trap makes so the traps are using Puncture, as I recently mentioned. Sever of Ticks makes so we just throw out more traps. Exploded Bait is really nice as our Falcon will just deal more damage to netted enemies. And Tagline Weapon makes so the netted enemies deal less physical damage to us. And Quick Throw makes why we have the Huntress Advantage buff, we now also get increased throw attack speed here. For the gear, as I mentioned, we do not need any uniques for this build. However, you do want to have a dagger as a base, and basically it's going to be mostly for the Umbral Blades here, as the Lethal Darkness here will inflict a additional Shadow Dagger if we have a dagger equipped. Other than that, just try to go for as much Critical Strike multiplayer as we can. Physical Penetration helps as well with the Minion Fist Pen, and also added Minion Melee Damage and Bow Damage. We're also using a shield and uh, this is with as much block chance as we can get and uh, basically this is going to be combining with the new falcon passive here deflect and weave which makes so all of our block chance now will transform into glassing blow chance. So for this uh, current setup we have this uh, shield here which will give us over 50% block uh, we have this uh, body armor which will give us a more percent of uh, receiving a glancing blow and uh, combining uh, different sources from the passive tree making it so we are above 100% chance of receiving a glancing blow and basically what glancing blow does is that it will reduce the damage taken by 35% from hits which is really really huge and for the body armor you can also go for a factory armor base here for some extra melee and throw damage for the falcon but currently i need to have this body armor as it makes it so we are capped for the glancing blow chance other than that, basically just go for throw damage, uh, getting some chance to shred armor on hit helps as well as mentioned before. Uh, rings, throw damage and Magnus throw mana cost, get some resist, minion damage, dexterity is huge and uh, yeah, really easily to scale and start out this uh, build basically. For the idols, just go for life idols basically with some resist on them. And uh, yeah, double health is really awesome if you manage to find some. And here are the passive skill tree. I just go over them real quick here and you can pause the video if you like to. Or you can also go to Lost Epoch tool page and check them out more for yourself. So what do you think about the Shadow Dagger Trapper Falconer? Have you tried it out before or another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. If you got any other questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Happy farming and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!